Uh, have you ever pondered over the origin of life? How did we come into existence? The big question that has baffled humans for centuries. Since time immemorial, numerous theories have been put forth in an attempt to explain this mystery. Some propose evolution, a slow process of change from one form to another, which may include the Big Bang, a sudden explosion that led to the formation of the universe. But today, our focus isn't on these widely accepted theories. Instead, we'll focus on what religion means. Now, we turn the pages back to one of the oldest accounts of life's origins, the creation story from the Bible. Yes, the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, provides a detailed description of how life, earth and the heavens came into being. This biblical account of creation isn't merely a religious belief, it's a theory that has stood the test of time and has been subjected to numerous scientific examinations. And interestingly, some scientific arguments seem to support this ancient narrative. One such argument is the scientific case against evolution which challenges the belief in evolution by highlighting the lack of observable evidence for macroevolution and transitional forms in the fossil record. But before we dive into these details, let's take a moment to consider a notable quote from Genesis. The evening and the morning were the first day. This statement, simple and clear, sets the stage for the biblical story of creation. It suggests that each day of creation was a day as we know it today, consisting of an evening and a morning. And, most importantly, it affirms the divine power that brought everything into existence. Let's delve into the fascinating story of creation as told in the book of Genesis. In the beginning, as per the Bible, the world was formless and darkness was everywhere. Picture this, an expanse of nothingness, a canvas devoid of any markings a stage awaiting the grand performance, and then, with a command, light pierced through the void. The first day, as Genesis tells us, was born. The concept of a day as we know it aligns perfectly with the Genesis account. The Bible states the evening and the morning were the first day. A day, as we understand it, is a period marked by an evening and a morning as the sun sets and rises. This rhythm of time has been the same since the inception of the world, according to the Genesis narrative. On the second day, an expanse called sky was formed, separating the waters above from the waters below. The third day witnessed the command for dry ground to appear and for vegetation to sprout. The fourth day brought forth the sun, the moon and the stars to govern the day and the night and to mark the seasons, days and years. The fifth and sixth days were a flurry of life, birds flying across the expanse of the sky, sea creatures of all kinds teeming in the waters, and animals of every sort roaming the earth. Finally, on the sixth day, the most remarkable creation was fashioned, mankind created in the image of God. These six days were not vast, indefinite periods stretching over thousands or even millions of years, but literal days, each consisting of an evening and a morning. The Bible states, He spake and it was done, He commanded and it stood fast. For the one who could call into existence unnumbered worlds, how long a time would be required for the evolution of the earth from chaos. And thus, over six days, the world as we know it was created. Now let's examine the scientific case concerning evolution. The theory of evolution posits that all life forms share a common ancestor and over millions of years these life forms have evolved into the myriad of species we see today. One of the arguments used by science is macroevolution, the process by which new species are supposedly formed. If macroevolution is indeed a factual process, we should be able to observe it happening in real time or at least find ample evidence in the fossil record, right? However, the fossil record, contrary to what we might expect, is riddled with gaps and lacks clear transitional forms. Leading evolutionists have acknowledged this lack of proof for macroevolution. Some have even admitted that it cannot be observed or replicated, which raises questions about its scientific validity. After all, a key aspect of the scientific method is the ability to replicate experiments and observe consistent results. Furthermore, scientists have conducted countless experiments on rapidly reproducing species, hoping to witness the birth of a new species. Yet, these experiments have consistently failed to produce such results. This lack of empirical evidence casts further doubt on the theory of evolution. In addition to the absence of observable macroevolution, the gaps in the fossil record also raise questions. If evolution is a slow, gradual process taking place over millions of years, we should find an abundance of transitional fossils, yet these are conspicuously absent. 
This glaring gap in the fossil record is a significant challenge to the theory of evolution. In conclusion, while the theory of evolution may seem plausible at first glance, a closer look reveals a lack of direct evidence. The absence of observable macroevolution, the failure of experiments to produce new species, and the gaps in the fossil record all cast significant doubt on the theory. It seems that the evidence against evolution is quite compelling. Well, not so fast. What about the similarities in DNA between different organisms? Let's dive into that. Many organisms share similar DNA sequences, which is often presented as evidence of common ancestry. The theory goes like this. If two species have similar DNA, they must have evolved from the same ancestor. But could there be another interpretation? Imagine you're an engineer tasked with designing different types of vehicles, cars, trucks, motorcycles. Despite their differences, they all need to perform similar functions. Move forward, steer, stop. So you'd likely use similar components and designs across these vehicles. Does it mean they evolved from each other? No, it means a common engineer used the same intelligent design principles for each vehicle. Similarly, the DNA of different organisms could reflect a common designer employing the same intelligent design principles. Just as our hypothetical engineer used the same design for different vehicles, so too could an intelligent designer use similar genetic coding for different life forms. This doesn't necessarily imply common ancestry, but rather a common creator. Take the genetic code for protein synthesis. It's nearly universal across all life forms from bacteria to humans. An evolutionist might argue this points to a common ancestor billions of years ago. But couldn't it also suggest a common designer who used the same successful design across all forms of life? And let's not forget, even with similar DNA, the differences between species are staggering. Consider humans and chimps. We share about 98% of our DNA, yet the differences are profound, spanning intellect, language, artistry and morality. The 2% difference in DNA represents millions of genetic letter differences. Could random mutations over time account for such vast differences? Or does it suggest a designer with a purpose? So the DNA evidence could be pointing towards a creator, not evolution. All these points, while they may not definitively prove creation as described in Genesis, certainly cast a shadow of doubt on the theory of evolution. They compel us to consider alternative explanations for our existence, our complex genetic makeup, and the diversity of life on our planet. Let's not forget the words from Psalm 33, verse 9, He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. This verse reminds us of the might and power of the Creator, who could bring uncountable worlds into existence. Whether you believe in the creation story or not, it's an intriguing narrative that provokes thought and curiosity. It's a reminder of the mysteries of life that we are yet to unravel. Creationism is based on faith, faith that there's a God who has revealed himself in nature and rightly understood both the revelations of science and the experiences of life are in harmony with the testimony of scripture to the constant working of God in nature. The evolution theory is based on science. It's birthed from the idea that matter essentially organized itself, except there's one tiny little problem. This has never been observed. Science is observable and should result in similar results time and time again. If the science of evolution is reduced to requiring faith, which according to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, then perhaps the basis of evolution has shifted. Religion seeks to give meaning and purpose to life on the basis of faith. If evolution relies on faith to explain our existence, then the question now is, is evolution a science or is it a religion? Share your thoughts. Thank you for watching and subscribing.